God, I'm not fighting no more. Kelly, let me do my job. I just told you I didn't want to do no interviews. And you said you are going to do interviews. Now you told me to do interviews. Now you're trying to take me away from them. No. Let me show, let me show, let me show Dante's Boxing Nation some love. That's what I'm talking Dante, about. Dante, he, he's been at the Mayweather Boxing Club for years, uh, grinding, working hard. Dante also, you know, paid a lot of his own money, just like a lot of different other companies, to support us. So I, I must show love back. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? Well, we've been waiting to see what Gennady Golovkin and Team Golovkin were going to decide to do since they lost to Canelo Alvarez. The WBC ordered them to fight Charlo to get a third fight with Canelo Alvarez. And then they decided to avoid Charlo and try to fight Murata, who at the time was pretty much the interim WBA champion because he wasn't the super champion. So this news of Golovkin thinking that he was going to get Murata next instead of having to fight Charlo made Golovkin's day. But soon as he got his hopes up high, somebody ended up beating Murata before Golovkin could do it, or at least beating him again. And that was Rob Brandt, pulled off the upset and completely foiled Gennady Golovkin's plans again. So after this string of bad luck for Gennady Golovkin when it comes to avoiding dangerous competition, I was really curious to see who was he going to try to fight and what he was going to do next. Well, guys, we now know for sure what he's never going to do, according to Golovkin's promoter, and that is fight the very dangerous Jamal Charlo. Tom Loeffler, he just confirmed that in an interview he did with BoxingScene.com. Tom Loeffler, he was asked the question, what's next for Gennady Golovkin? And Tom, he said, ESPN is there. The zone is an option. We're considering both. Tom was then asked the question, how about Jamal Charlo and Showtime? You could do a one and done with them. Loeffler responded, no, Charlo doesn't make sense. That's not going to happen. Boxing Scene said, well, it seems like the zone has the best opponents available for Gigi. Loeffler, he said, we will be talking to DAZN. But then later on in the interview, Tom Loeffler, he said that DAZN, they haven't reached out to me. They need to reach out to us. Then he said, if he can't work with DAZN or if they can't work with DAZN, then they'll go to ESPN. The reporter said, but there's no one for Golovkin to fight at ESPN. And then Tom Loeffler said, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who he fights. He's the attraction. Meaning they're not even looking for tough competition anymore. As long as they can generate good numbers, they are no longer going to face the best competition in the division. I shouldn't even say as long as they generate good numbers, because even if they do horrible numbers, they're still going to continue to face weak opposition. Because Golovkin's poor pay-per-view numbers that he did when he fought against David Lemieux, that did not deter them from fighting against weak opposition. With that being said, let me go ahead and get into it, man. I hate to say I told you so, decafs, but didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you guys? All these decafs were in the comment section saying, how do you know, Dante, how do you know that Golovkin won't fight Charlo? Why are you so quick to assume that he's not gonna fight him? He is gonna fight him and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But you know, once again, decafs are usually all over the place. That's why their message is never consistent because it's all based off of emotion. It's not based off of the truth. It's based off of what makes them feel better. So you have some decafs that were saying that Golovkin, he wasn't afraid and he will get in there with Charlo and you're making Charlo out to be this big monster. No, no, no. Golovkin is making him out to be this big monster. I mean, you did not have to be a prophet to know that Golovkin wasn't going to face Jamal Charlo. But what's really interesting to me is I remember a long time ago, Abel Sanchez, when Charlo first became Golovkin's mandatory, Abel Sanchez, he told me in interviews that Charlo didn't deserve to fight him. He didn't deserve to fight him. I said, who would you like to see Golovkin fight if he's not going to fight Charlo? 
And he said, I would rather him fight. He said, if anyone deserves a fight with Golovkin, it's Danny Jacobs. That's what he said. This was a while ago. This was way before the rematch. And now fast forward to present day, they're no longer mentioning Danny Jacobs name. Now, I was thinking after Jacobs performance against Sergey Darren Yevchenko this past weekend, that maybe just maybe that would kind of bait Golovkin in to take in the fight with Sir, with um, Danny Jacobs. But from hearing this interview, the main thing I noticed was Tom Lawler did not mention Danny Jacobs name. He didn't mention Darren Yevchenko's Andre Billy Joe Saunders. He didn't mention any of these names as possible opponents for Gennady Golovkin. Now, keep in mind, when they were considering Murata, when they were considering Vanas Monarosian, when they were considering Jaime Munguia, when they were considering these opponents, Tom Loeffler came out and said right away, these are the opponents we're looking at. But now, because they no longer have any of these options, and the only options that are available for them are tough opponents, now Tom Loeffler is not mentioning any names. So listen, man, I'm gonna tell you guys just like this. If Tom Loeffler and Gennady Golovkin, if they are deciding to no longer face the top five middleweights in the world, then guys, we no longer can take Golovkin serious at all. We, we can't take him serious at all. That's pretty much like him pulling himself out of the rankings. If you're not gonna face anyone in the top five or the top 10, how do we even take you serious? This man, Tom Loeffler, Golovkin's promoter, he just said, it doesn't matter if Golovkin doesn't have opponents. He can sell tickets. This is pretty much what he said. I mean, that almost reminds me of when Bob Arum said, who cares who's on the undercard? Nobody watches the undercard anyway. So my point in question is, what about the fans? What about the fans that want to see a Super Bowl? They want to see a gold medal match every season, every year. They want to see the best fight the best. What about them? How does that benefit the fans? This is why it's always, it sounds ridiculous. Whenever you hear a fan say something like, well, hey, Golovkin is gonna make a lot of money and he's still gonna do numbers, so why does it matter who he fights? Are you serious? You would rather Gennady Golovkin be looked at as a joke just because his bank account looks good? If Gennady Golovkin, he lives in a nice house, he's got a whole bunch of nice toys and his kids are pretty much set. He's set for life. How does that benefit you as a fan while you're not getting to watch the best fights? The only way it benefits the fans is they get to see him possibly retire without getting knocked out or getting knocked out by a black fighter, which is the decaf's worst nightmare. This is the reason why you only hear fans get so upset when one of their favorite fighters is being challenged by some dangerous black fighter. And they're in the comment section like, he doesn't have to fight that guy. Why does he have to fight that guy? And they're getting all angry just because the black guy is challenging him. And it's so ridiculous because I've never gotten upset because I've heard one fighter call out another fighter. Even if that one fighter was extremely dangerous, I've never gotten upset about it. Even if I'm rooting for a fighter and I know the guy I'm rooting for is in an uphill battle and he's a heavy underdog, I still want to watch the fight. That's how fans are supposed to be. But once again, when you're dealing with race, nationality, and pride, that completely changes the dynamic. And that ends up putting a lot more on the line for these ignorant type of fans. I mean, to hear a fighter or even a promoter say this about his fighter, and you guys have to understand something. Tom Loeffler is speaking for Golovkin, unless Golovkin comes out and says, no, I completely disagree with my promoter. I do want to fight against Charlo. I do want to fight this guy and that guy. Until that happens, then we have to believe that Tom Loeffler is definitely speaking for Gennady Golovkin until we see some actions that prove otherwise by Gennady Golovkin. But once again, to hear a team 
admit that they are not going to face the majority of the top middleweights in the world if that fighter is too dangerous and it's not an easy opponent a Vanas Monarosian if you will a Murata if you will you'll continue to fight the Vanas Monarosians and Muratas but you will stay away from the tough opponents guys so you can really understand how bad this makes Gennady Golovkin look just imagine if fighters on the coincidental list like Jamal Charlo like Errol Spence, uh, Terrence Crawford, and the list just goes on and on. We could even throw Andre Ward back in the mix. Imagine if after they got a maybe two or three good wins and start making some good money, they decided they're no longer going to face the best competition and they're just gonna think about themselves and think about their bank account. Think about what makes sense financially for them. Thinking about what fight is a risk and what fight would be considered the very least risk? Imagine if Andre Ward decided after he won the Super Six to no longer fight pound for pound champions. Imagine if Floyd Mayweather stopped fighting pound for pound champions after he beat Diego Corrales. Because that's when he became number one pound for pound the best fighter in the world. After he beat Diego Corrales. I mean, you could even throw the Oscar De La Hoya fight in there because after that, that's when Floyd Mayweather became a cash cow in the sport of boxing. So once again, what if Floyd Mayweather would have stopped facing the best competition out there? Now, keep in mind, when it comes to Floyd Mayweather, even when Floyd was close to 40, they still wanted him to face better competition than Gennady Golovkin is facing today. So I could have gave you guys tons of examples when it comes to different fighters if they were pulling the same moves that Golovkin is attempting to pull right now. But that's why it's so good to have that damn hope insurance because it truly covers everything. Whatever you do in the ring, it's covered. If you lose in the ring, it's covered because all the decals are gonna say you were robbed no matter how bad you lose. If you start giving up your belts just to avoid tough competition and you start cruising just facing the weakest opposition available? Don't worry, the hope insurance covers that too. So I'm gonna close out saying this. Once again, if Gennady Golovkin doesn't get in the ring with the top middleweights, you guys, you fans, and you old media members, you cannot have it both ways. You can't praise this guy as he's pound for pound one of the best fighters in the world if he refuses to fight the best opponents. You can't win a gold medal in the Olympics without facing the people in your bracket. In other words, you can't go to the Olympics and say, hey, I know you guys want me to fight this guy from Cuba and this guy from the United States, but I actually brought my own opponents that I want to fight at the Olympics. Is that okay, guys? No, it doesn't work that way. And this is what Golovkin is trying to do. He's trying to bring his own weak opponents to the party. I keep telling you fans, it's okay if Golovkin wants to fight weak opposition. If you want to give him all these excuses and say he doesn't have to fight any good fighters, that's okay. That's up to him. How he wants to be remembered is up to Gennady Golovkin. Because right now, Golovkin is the most overrated fighter of this era. He's the most overrated fighter of this generation, hands down, and it's not even close. Once again, you guys have to remember what overrated means. It is you guys that overrated him. It's ESPN that overrated him. It's HBO, Jim Lampley and the gang that overrated him. And then the fans took their message and ran with it. At the end of the day, Golovkin, he could do whatever he wants. It's his prerogative. But he's gonna be to blame when his career is remembered as a joke. As one of his best advocates, Jim Lampley actually put it. Jim Lampley, he said that if Golovkin loses to Canelo Alvarez, his entire career will be a failure. And it doesn't matter if you say you thought Golovkin won the fight, none of that matters because the fight should have never even been close enough to even question a decision at the end of the day. 
And now Gennady Golovkin's people are saying that Canelo needs Golovkin more than Triple G needs him. Tell me how delusional that sounds. Canelo Alvarez came in the ring smaller than Gennady Golovkin, backed him up and beat him in the rematch and then turned around and signed a $365 million contract with DAZN. And Tom Lawler is saying, Canelo needs Golovkin. Okay, if you guys truly believe that, let Gennady Golovkin retire. Let Gennady Golovkin retire, not fighting the Charlos, not fighting the Andres, the Darren Yevchenkos, giving up his belts just to avoid dangerous competition like Darren Yevchenko. And his biggest, most decisive wins with no controversy are against fighters like David Lemieux, Dominic Wade, and Willie Monroe. Let's see how Golovkin will be remembered. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one.